I know, we've already made two videos about this Xiaomi Su7, but there's still more to share. Because I found that many of you are very interested and have lots of questions about this brand new EV. Now with the Su7 sitting right in our garage, I think it's the perfect time to answer all these questions. The most asked question is how long the real-world range is. Sadly, we haven't done any proper range test yet, but on the test driving day, it was doing around 18 kilowatts hour per 100 km. Most of it was on highway with a few traffic jams and a small section on mountain roads. And the temperature was around 20 degrees Celsius. Most importantly, I did not drive it in an energy-saving way. Besides, I will show you guys the result posted by some reliable sources in China. The software is, of course, unquestionable, especially the car to phone connectivity. As for the infotainment itself, it's also great. The UI has smooth animations, the customization is more flexible than other UIs that revolve around a map, and the voice command is very responsive and accurate, with GPT inside. To be honest, I had the same doubt. But after seeing it, I was quite surprised. The interior surely is not on the same level of new and other luxury cars, but it looks and feels quite good. No obvious shortcomings in the materials and craftsmanship. The seats balance quite well between sportiness and comfort, especially the side clamping that are similar to a BMW. As mentioned earlier, the suspension and sound proving are both quite good. I did not have a decibel meter, but the cruising experience is what we call comfy at least on par with the Tesla Model S. In China, C7's main rivals are from Zika, Neo, and Tesla, with the base version competing against the Zika 7 and Tesla Model 3, and the Max version against Zika 1 and Neo ET5. Since I test drove the Max version, I'll focus on comparing the C7 with the ET5 that I own. In terms of handling, comfort, space, and ergonomics, the C7 outperforms the ET5 without a doubt. However, I think the ET5 has a better looking exterior and interior quality. Plus, Neo offers battery swapping. Compared to the Zico Double One, although both have similar performance and price, they have different personalities. The Double One prioritizes comfort and practicality, but the C7 has a clear advantage in intelligence and sportiness. Compared to the Porsche, driving and even sitting the C7 feels a lot similar. However, as for the uh, performance, it still falls short of the Taycan, especially the endurance in track. Lastly, about buying from a new brand. While Xiaomi isn't exactly a new brand, I still believe it is the best to avoid buying the first model of any brand, at least not from the first batch. It's better to wait for the product to be time-tested. But my boss can't wait, so here we are. I'm sorry, I didn't get to charge the car yet, but Xiaomi claims that it supports up to 400 kilowatts of charging and can charge from 10% to 80% in just 19 minutes. Well, only on paper. And it's compatible with 99% of the third-party chargers. Plus, Xiaomi is going to build 600 kilowatts liquid cooling charging piles in the future. As for the home charger, a 7 kilowatts one costs 4,000 yuan, an 11 kilowatts 5,000 yuan and a portable charging and discharging device costs 800 yuan. I've always believed that as long as the software capability is strong, the ADAS won't be a problem. And the Su7 is a prime example. As Xiaomi's first car, its sensing capabilities and the maneuver smoothness are excellent. It changed lanes more decisively than my Neo ET5. Moreover, it's said that Xiaomi's City NOA will be released as soon as May, and by that time, we will thoroughly test it. Haha, <laughs> very funny. It looks like a lot of you are really into this car, but I've got some bad news. First off, I've heard nothing about this car going global. And second, only hours after the launch, the Founders Edition is already sold out, and Chinese buyers have to wait months for a regular one. So it seems you have to wait even longer for it to appear overseas. But hey, like I said in the last video, Xiaomi's got a complete overseas sales channel. If Beijing decides to bring the Su7 abroad, getting ready 
probably won't take too long. Just so you know, I only covered some of the comments. If I didn't get to your question, you might want to check out our last video, when you may find your answer. If you still have questions, write them in the comments, and I'll do my best to reply. For anything I can't put my finger on right now, I'll get back to you after I really test it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.